I've always been fighting my entire life the idea of a, like a right brain, left brain, logic, art, science, art. It, it turns out that that, that idea has, has no scientific uh, background at all. It, it's actually not true. There, there isn't a difference between one side of our brain and the other in terms of being logical or, or artistic. And so uh, it's, it's a chance to just let that flow. It's uh, been an honor for Artec House to work with the NASA and really be inspired. You know, I think more, most importantly, we like kids, you know, we get inspired. We artists. What I can say today is we probably were not able to do what we just experiencing now five years ago. Working with uh, NASA together, what's really inspiring is so much information and so, ma so much knowledge and so much beautiful discoveries that, that artists like ourselves at Artec House had access to and bringing that to the public and bringing to the public in a new, absolutely innovative and totally 21st century way, right? And I think that's what makes this collaboration unique and also very special because we live and breathe in the same way. For our tech house and our team and the studio, you know, when we see the images, yes, we can actually do like a slideshow for you guys and make it all look nice, but we're not doing that. You know, we're going a little bit deeper. We make you be feeling part of that uh, spectacular that is happening around us. For the moment, hopefully to make audience stop and recognize and realize how small are we in this planet and how fragile we are. I don't know how much you guys know about the Artec House, but we are innovative art space. We always push the boundaries of what's possible uh, with the latest tools and presenting the art through technology, trying to use latest technological tools for storytelling. At Artec House, what we're trying to do, we try to make space disappear and make the content to appear in an absolutely new way. And the reason why is that, me personally, I coming from the family of movie directors, third generation, I mean, totally in, uh, inspired by motion pictures and uh, what Hollywood and uh, films did for the 20th century art. Living in 24th century, how can we experience the content in a very different way that we've been all experiencing for all these hundred years, which is just a screen and it's a portal. So yeah, it's, it's amazing what movie can do to take you to the another dimension, another portal, another story and, and be a part of it. But today we're living in a technological world where we can make this appear around us. Each time, every week, every day, Every year we're pushing this, similar like you guys at NASA, pushing how can you bring these beautiful images and great discoveries to the people. We at our tech house pushing these boundaries with the latest technologies to make audience experience the content in absolutely new way. Michelle, you've been great inspiration to us. Uh, thank you. It was, it was a really, it was an honor to work with you guys, and I, I think that the main thing was just trying to make everyone comfortable with working with scientists. That you know, scientists as well experience these things as human beings with emotions. You know, we we also have a sense of aesthetics and a beauty of, of elegance. We talked about that. And so I think a lot of times artists might not approach scientists thinking that there's some kind of a different creature and they think in a very different way. And I keep saying, you know, we're all human and we, we, we all experience this. And, and just like the, uh, the image that came out this morning of this amazing star, uh, star forming region, your, your, your first reaction, at least mine is, is emotion. P pure pure emo emotion, pure beauty. And what we learn is the artists and science are very similar. You know, it's very similar. Artists are only just a little crazier. We express ourselves. We, we have more freedom to, in a way, to go a little abstract, go a little, little bit outside of box. I was the one telling you there's no such thing as space and time. So I mean, we, we, <laughs> right. can, we can argue about who's the crazier there, but uh, yeah. The, 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 the ideas can get you know, even stranger and even more inspiring and disorienting as much as you like. I mean, the, the, that's all present in the actual science as well.
the, always a goal for all of us, both of us, artists and, and, and scientists, right? Like, how can we inspire uh, a next generation of scientists, next generation of artists? You know, when you get inspired with something like this, it's a very different inspiration. I think it's, it's, it sparkles some curiosity and it opens the absolutely new way to us to think. And, and that opens the new way of finding out things, right? And, and learn and create more, more scientists, more artists, and make us go forward. The idea of just the, the pure curiosity, the pure inspiration, the experience, you can, you can, later on, you can find out what the images are, you can find out when they were taken, you know, the star forming regions, galaxies, but at first just to let it wash over you and just to let the experience come first of all of this, this, this beauty and this, I mean, the thing I like about this is how dynamic and moving it is because space is very dynamic. Things are moving very fast. I mean, we're, we're going um, half a million miles an hour right now around a giant black hole. It's just that the scale of it is hard for us to feel because the scale is so large. You know, I was looking at some images of the sun today and thinking how wonderful it would be if you could be there to see these giant, you know, million mile loops of plasma coming off and all of that. I mean, it's all moving. It's all constantly changing. Space doesn't just stay still. And so th this is perhaps a better way to, to experience just how dynamic the universe is. That's why we wanted to make it so dynamic and make yeah. it so unique and not just a slideshow or it's just some images, right? That it's not moving. And that's something that is very difficult to do because we, you know, we have always this one perspective, you know, throughout many years, this like typical moving image of the space. Let the space disappear, you know, let the time disappear. And, and it's really up to us how we are gonna able to fully immerse ourselves and connect to this beauty and this art, right? And I think what this type of art does is makes you part of the art and makes you part of the creation because it's not static image, it's not passive, it's, it's something that asks you to be a part of it. In a movie, going back to the movie, like you know, you, you, you're sitting in a seat, you're watching the storytelling that you kind of, it's a portal for you to be a part of it, but, it, but it, it's very passive, it's, a, it's not, you know, you're not par part of it physically. And this time, with the, with the te technology today and with the tools today, we can make people be part of it. And there is no limit to today where we are with, uh, with the help of technology. It's just a limit to our creativity. And I think, you know, that doesn't have a limit. And I think it's all about how we can get inspired, empowered, and like move, keep on moving forward like, like we are in the universe, we're moving forward. Right now I'm experiencing the opposite, you know, we're going so fast but we don't feel it. We're not actually moving, but boy, am I feeling like we are. I think for me, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely not the typical audience as, you know, somebody that needed to be inspired. There, there are people, and I've met them all over the world, you know, I remember, you know, I, I've met them in, in rural Africa or in cities or wherever, where people just keep looking up at the stars and they can't quite get them out of their head. And um, I was not raised by scientists. You said you were raised by artists. Uh, but my mother said that when I was about uh, three and I could walk, she would keep, I would keep trying to go outside to see the stars. And, and she, had, she, she was a very human, she is a very human uh, directed person involved in the civil rights movement, all of that. And she's like, why are you interested in those little lights in the sky? And of course, at that time, I had no idea what they even were. So it turns out that astronomy, there have always been people that love those little lights in the sky. I mean, for, for as long as we've been humans, and we don't really know why. And I think I'm an example of, they, they, they can group humans artificially and say that, you know, you, you're more logical, you're more artistic. Um, I had more of a talent in the visual arts than I did in mathematics or in physics, but I couldn't get science out of my head. I, I just couldn't get it out of my head. I was one of those people that just loved the little lights in the sky. And so from a toddler, I never wanted to be anything other than a, a scientist, an astronomer. And, uh, and so I was one of those people that just kind of came into the world wanting to study the little lights in the sky. And there were a lot of cultural effects that tried to dissuade me from that. I still get a lot of, you, you, you don't seem like a scientist, you, know, you, you, the, you don't have the right personality to be a scientist. That's all artificial. Yeah, the, the idea that there is a, an artist personality, a scientist personality, it, that, that's a way, we, we've hurt so many people that way by, by trying to group them. So li listen to what your own curiosity tells you and 
that can't be wrong. I was one of those people that just came into the world saying, I'm going to study the stars. In Waukesha, Wisconsin. I wish I can, t I can say that I had like lawyers or doctors in my family. Everyone that I know from even uncles and aunts and everyone that one is blood related, everyone was artists and different forms of artists. From the movies to the acting to the dancing to the any, every form of art. And today, me living in 21st century was, you know, that was the kind of like inspiration to look back and also re recognizing that, you know, how can I bring the art of the future today, you know? And, and thank to, thanks to my team and amazing Artec House uh, family that we have, we're pushing this every, every time. And, you know, this is our first location. We opened up this 2017. Uh, we are first digital art space in the United States, and I can proudly say the very innovative art space, you know, maybe in the world, where, you know, we we create over 35 shows up to date. Uh, and to me, it was like, yeah, it's it's always that. What's next, you know, in the arts? What are the tools that we are using today to express ourselves? I wanted to make the art accessible for anyone and not just, okay, you know, you, know, you don't belong to the art world. Every, the, we're living in an art world. Uh, this is the art. This is a creation of everything around us. It is all shared. Unless everybody in the world can feel personally invested in both art and science, you know, then our, our culture is just gonna fall apart. Because, I mean, the idea that art is not necessary for culture, for knowledge, for, ex for exploration, or the idea that science is a, a luxury afforded to just a few people, you know, in, in the top universities, it's not for everybody. You know, everybody in the world has to participate in art and science in some way. You know, otherwise, I think we're, we're sort of dead in the water. Well, I think that that's the only thing that's going to make us survive as a humans. You know, we, today, we, when we're living in a very powerful movement with the technology and us being working with the technology so close and knowing how fast it is moving it it's questionable you know it's something that makes makes us realize that okay you know we we got to get more creative and we got to we we we, we got to express ourselves we think about the image of the scientist, and you're showing some images here from the 1960s, from the, the classic Apollo program. You know, the idea of the very, you know, the, the, the steel-eyed you know, missile man, you know, the person that doesn't show any emotion, solves any problem. And uh, you know, was that image ever realistic, and was it in the, in the end harmful? Because it said to people, you don't have the right stuff. You know, what, what is the right stuff? And you know, the people at the end of World War II who were test pilots, who'd had to push their emotions so far down in order to, to survive being in the war, being a test pilot in these incredibly dangerous circumstances, being on the moon, you know, being good engineers and being very calm and collected. You know, how, how much harm did that do in separating what science is from the rest of life? It's something only an elite few who are very, very different from me could ever be part of. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to know now that, that at NASA, things are very different. The scientific leaders now are far more diverse in so many ways. I mean, not just gender and ethnicity, but in, in how they process information, whether they're quiet. Some of the best leaders at NASA right now are more quiet people. I mean, hardly the swaggering test pilot person. And, and, and seeing the range of diverse ways of thinking, the diverse ways of working with people. And, and, and then just diversity and inclusion to, to, to have you know, a population that looks more like the world. Uh, those things have changed, and, and science benefits from it.